Welcome to Subjective Curiosities. Today's topic is Terence McKenna. Terence McKenna was born November 16, 1946, and died April 3, 2000, from brain cancer. After building a foundation on insect collecting, art history, and countercultural drug exploration, McKenna became most famous as a writer and lecturer producing hundreds of hours of pre- and early internet recordings on a wide range of topics, but primarily focused on his relationship with the unspeakable insights and experiences he had on plant-based hallucinogens such as psilocybin and dimethyltryptamine, or DMT, and his attempt to put words in the form of cultural memes to share these experiences with others and build something of a roadmap of the psychedelic dimension. While he did not advocate every individual person try psychedelics, he did describe them to be just as essential to the human experience as sex is. These insights range from the entertainingly absurd though methodically thought out to absolute paradigm shattering. Either way, it's an interesting trip. By going beyond the reaches of orthodox science, McKenna attempts to explain some of the weirdest phenomena one may encounter throughout life using not much more than his own rationality and first-hand experience. Deeply inspired by the works of Carl Jung, Alfred North Whitehead, Tim Leary, Aldous Huxley, Marshall McLuhan, and James Joyce, even if you don't agree with McKenna's conclusions, he is a wonderful springboard for other ideas and topics. He often speaks on language and human culture, shamanism, ecological collapse, alchemy, indigenous cultures, and practically every known hallucinogen from the time period he was alive. McKenna also often collaborates with other interesting speakers, including Nicole Maxwell, Ralph Abraham, Rupert Sheldrake, and Ryan Eisler. When it came to hallucinogens, he generally sought out those that were well-tested through a history of shamanic use, came from a plant, and were as close to natural brain chemistry as possible. When it came to psilocybin found in mushrooms, he advocated five dried grams on an empty stomach in silent darkness. For DMT, found in the indigenous brew ayahuasca, he recommended three really big hits in its pure form. Some of McKenna's memes he tried to share included the stoned ape theory, the idea that psilocybin-containing mushrooms are the unknown evolutionary factor that caused the brains of humans' ancestors to develop consciousness and grow in size over a relatively short time and develop language. When forced from the treetops of Africa due to drought, these ancestors would have changed their diet and certainly would have found psilocybin-containing mushrooms. At low doses, they improve eyesight. At medium doses, they stimulate sexual activity. And at heroic doses, they expand consciousness, diminish ego, promote mutual aid, and encourage linguistic activities in the form of glossal alia. He doesn't stop at human evolution though. McKenna also makes a case for the Amanita Mascara mushroom being the pagan origin of Santa Claus. Not weird enough for you? Well, let's get weird. Terence has an elaborate theory that the King Wind sequence of the I Ching was a lost divination technique that could, using fractal mathematics, chart the wave of novelty, a word he used to describe increasing complexity or uniqueness in the world. He used this sequence to have a computer program built named Time Wave Zero that charts this complexity as fractal waves that you can type in dates and see what historical events happened at what part of each wave. He believed that in 2012, this complexity would peak and condense itself into an end of history. He didn't claim to know exactly what would happen, sometimes describing it as the flying saucer, philosopher's stone, logos, eschaton, etc., sometimes being apocalyptic, and sometimes saying human beings would transcend current limitations of consciousness or matter itself, and sometimes tying it to a new technology, particularly the invention of a time machine. He believed this end of history refracted backward throughout our history and at points influenced it, for example, in all the religious obsessions with apocalyptic futures. Particularly of interest to me are his descriptions of DMT-induced hallucinations in which he often saw what he called the machine elves of hyperspace, transforming creatures that jump in and out of your chest, seem to have an autonomy all their own, and want to teach you to bring objects into visible reality by making mouth sounds. McKenna thought the entire universe was actually made of language. Other ideas include that the mushroom is an alien, or the guy in mind communicating, and he also put forth an underrated scheme for lowering the human population without violence by having people in the so-called first world commit to birthing no more than one child. While I obviously enjoy listening to Terrence McKenna, having clocked at least 150 hours of his audio discography, I do as I would with all authors from all times find myself disagreeing with him often. 
Two of my biggest disagreements come more from his older years when he began to express the following sentiments more often. First, is that he ruthlessly critiques scientism while at the same time drinking to his fill at the toilet bowl of technological progress as if technology can in the future solve the problems it created since and by its creation. Certainly much easier to believe in the late 1990s before the reality of Google mega servers and Foxconn microchip factories were well known and environmental collapse had displaced entire populations. Second is his naive stance that capitalism would be fine if it traded non-material goods. Basically the antithesis of the entire piracy and creative commons movements and certainly a negation of the countercultural roots he sprang from. He often jumps to wild implications from things that I don't think are inherently linked. Even when he is wrong though, I do find a a lot of use in what he says. For instance, something of no use in everyday material reality may be applicable in the dream or psychedelic state, and furthermore, it seems often that structures of explanation repeat themselves. So while Terence may be wrong on the specific application of an idea, the truly original thoughts may yet be of great use applied outside their original context. Also, while psychedelic substance, among other experiences, led me to the same split he had with dogmatic materialism and orthodox science, I don't think any amount of drugs could turn me into a neoplatonist. It's not all goofy rabbit hole theories and hallucinogenic trip descriptions though. McKenna promoted above all else, the immediate presence of direct experience, was deeply knowledgeable about shamanism and hallucinogens, and reminds us to never be afraid to go it alone, to find the others, and that nature loves courage. In this novelty-saturated post-2012 world, where someone as obnoxious as Joe Rogan is the most well-known advocate of DMT, the psychonaut bard Terence McKenna is sorely missed.